Now I'll start to introduce the idea of partial range deadlift. What do I mean by partial range? Well, quite simply, um, if with conventional deadlift you have the bar on the floor, or rather normally it would rest on the weights discs, but basically you're lifting off the floor to do your deadlift. With partial range, the object is raised above the height of the floor. Sometimes you can use a power cage or rack for this. We're at the moment going to look at the use of boxes. But in any event, when the object you're lifting is not resting on the floor, it's raised above it, it effectively becomes a partial deadlift. Now, just as with most forms of partial, you can have different heights. At the moment I've got it set up on the high boxes here, I've got some lower boxes, and I'll introduce the idea of these sort of things as we go on. But first of all, why would you want to do partial range deadlift? The simple answer <laughs> is that it allows you to lift more weight. Now, I haven't got very much on the bar here, I've got about 100 kilos, but the main thing is, you can probably imagine, whatever weight, whatever top weight is my maximum for lifting at this height, I'm certainly going to be able to lift more as a partial than I am to lift it straight off the ground, because here I have to cover a greater range of movement, so I have to bring the weight up across its bar path, bring it up a greater distance using more energy. Higher up, it's that much easier, my range of movement is reduced, maybe I'm lifting one foot rather than two foot in the air, quite simply. Therefore, I'm going to be able to lift more weight. Now, of course, that raises the question, why do you want to lift more weight? Well, basically, we can approach this in one of two ways. Firstly, you may want to use partials in order to improve the the uh, maximum amount of weight that you can lift on full range deadlift. Or on the other hand, you may want to simply increase the total amount of weight that you can lift regardless of range. So, there are, uh, effectively there are two comparable but slightly different training goals. Whatever your particular goal is, um, the higher the box, the easier it's going to be to lift. So it pays to have more than one height. Ironically, perhaps, sometimes it is useful to work from high to low, and sometimes low to high, often to achieve a similar end, and I'll kind of explain what I mean. With a high box, I could start off with a weight that is too great for me to manage off the ground, practice lifting it at this height, continue to do some reps, get used to that, and then... When I'm comfortable lifting it at high partial range, I could move to a lower partial range and practice lifting the same weight over a greater range. And then when I'm comfortable with that, move it gradually to the floor. So that, <coughs> if you like, is a top-down approach. I put more weight on the bar at high level, where I know I can manage it, and then I increase the range, lower the height of the box, practice until I can manage it there, eventually try it off the ground. Alternately, <laughs> what you can do is work the other way up. Start on the floor, lift your maximum weight there, then when you've used up your capacity for full range, Go to a low box, lift off the ground here, Okay, put a little bit more weight on until you've used up this range. And when I can no longer lift weight at this range, I then get a high range, put more weight on the bar, lift here. with the end result that my high partial has a lot more weight on the bar than my low partial or my floor deadlift. But that's training my body to get used to bearing more weight. And having got used to bearing more weight, when I then return to lifting off the floor, 
I'm probably going to have found my strength in deadlift has increased a little bit because I've been training myself, not just physically but neurologically, to handle more weight. Now that's the essential nature of partial range deadlift. I'll get into a few more specifics on this in the next video.